and light and dark. It was time for light to finally begin the final triumph of light throughout this galaxy. So what then happens at that time is the so-called prophecy of Anchara coming true. At first the Anchara children did not want to believe it because to them it ran totally counter to what they had been doing for millions of years. Suddenly they were being told to stop. But their various priests and priestesses convinced them that the whole process of what was now being told to them was correct. They had to change. So they decided it was time to come forward and to work with the light. In the case of the light that I am mainly <clears throat> been taught by and have created all my beliefs and ideas and, and the various things that I say, it's called the Galactic Federation of Light, which is a group of beings of light throughout this galaxy whose basic objective is to spread the light throughout the galaxy. So the Galactic Federation and the Inchara empires came together and created what's called the Treaty of Inchara in the mid-90s. Because of it, the Anunnaki, seeing, you might say, the mud on the wall, so to speak, saw it was time to change. So they basically pulled out and all of a sudden the minions were upset, this dark cabal, because all of a sudden they had a basic problem. The group that was providing them with, you might say, the ideas and using their various abilities to see that these ideas manifested was suddenly gone. And they wanted the final aspect of what they were going to do, which was to basically break the rules that heaven had given the people, the Anunnaki, as far as to concern us and our return to being fully conscious beings. So they were going to work our DNA and our brain structures and get rid of all this, what they have been calling detritus in science and various other fields related to it. And so they wanted to get to a point where they would completely change us into physical beings like the uh, children of Manchara. So the time to do this had suddenly changed. But they said to themselves, this being the dark cabal, it is absolutely essential and necessary that these goals be carried out. So what has now happened is that the Galactic Federation under divine intervention from the divine plan of the Creator has come here and they are working now with people who, are, who have been a part of these peripheries we were talking about, these various beings of light on our world who are working hard to change the reality of how we live and work and see our reality and also to physically help with the changing of us from being limited conscious beings to being fully conscious beings. So what then <coughs> happens is that in 95 we have this Treaty of Anchara happening, the Anunnaki pulling out, and all of a sudden the Anunnaki come back and tell these various beings who are in the dark, the dark Kabbalists, the time has come to let go, to say that what you wanted to do is not possible and allow the light to permeate through this world, our reality here on earth, as it has begun to permeate throughout the rest of the galaxy. So what happens then is that the Kabbalists say to the Anunnaki, their former masters, no, you taught us well. We know how to carry on. We will not give up. And so what has happened over the last decade and a half is little by little by little by little the whole process of creating this might call for the dark Kabbalists their final solution to prevent us from becoming fully conscious beings is falling apart all their different aspects is falling away and so what is now happening is we are on the verge of the great change that should have been declared immediately in the mid 90s we are now as we enter the second decade of the 21st century we are now on the verge on the edge of this great change so that's where we are we have this group that I like to call the dark Kabbalist and I have another group which I like to call our earth allies the earth allies basically are three groups we talked about the dark Kabbalist among them were their sons and daughters who began to see that this darkness that was the sign of their power, their power and their wealth, was not really sufficient, that there has to be something else. And they began seeking spiritual alternate ways of doing things. So we have one group, I like to call these the, uh, the uh, scions of the wealthy and the powerful, who are working for the light. 
There's another group which were secret societies that had gotten various information during the course of these millennia from either angelic sources or from the Galactic Federation themselves and had books, they had concepts, they had ideas of how to do various things and they had kept very heavily to themselves almost like a, a, a society that had gone underground and they were now seeing they needed to come out they needed to find support and they needed to work together with each other. The, the third group are those people in government and, and politics and industry etc that had seen these first two groups starting to come together and were now believing deeply that they needed to work with these other two groups to create a new reality and they all saw that over their heads was another group and this group was the first contact team of the Galactic Federation and so the Galactic Federation group is what I would like to now call the Galactic Option. If you look at the at the Dark Cabal they have everything, they have money, they have power, they have secret technology. Under normal circumstances what this group represents would be very hard if almost impossible to get rid of or to change. What the Galactic Federation, the Galactic Option represents is a group like the Anunnaki but for the good that could now come with these other groups that we just talked about which I call our Earth Allies and come together with them and help create what is called a quiet revolution. This is a revolution that allows for a change in consciousness that allows for change in how wealth is distributed on this reality which we call planet Earth and finally allows for great change to happen which brings in technology that can change forever how this reality operates and how it perceives itself. So this is now what we're in the middle of right now. This quiet revolution is gaining momentum right now and we are near the end of, a great, of this great change. You might say we're at this watershed moment when all of this stuff we're talking about, the Earth Allies working with the Galactic Federation come together with the, with the group we just talked about that has power in industry and in government and in politics come all together to create what I like to call a new reality. And so that's where we are right now. You bring up a... <coughs> just a minute. <coughs> so, Sheldon, you brought up an interesting word for me, and it's empowerment. And I see in everything that you're saying right now, that there are basically, I don't like to generalize, but there's going to be two groups of people. One group of people that, that doesn't and can't believe this, and the other people that do believe it. Now the people that don't believe it, they're not going to be doing anything for or against what you're saying. The people that do believe it might have a tendency to, uh, we, we have this human tendency to wait for a savior or a messiah or a magic bullet and I think there's a tendency here for the people that do believe you to not do anything assuming that it's all going to be taken care of and what I'm curious about is what can we do realistically like today as we go out into the world what can we do in our personal lives to facilitate this event? Now this is something that I talk about a lot and, what I, and I really think it's vital. What we have to understand deeply as we get into our internal knowing of what's happening in our world is that we have the ability to manifest. We are actually co-creator manifestors of reality. And so we have to say to ourselves, yes, it is fantastic, it is amazing, it is wonderful that all this amazing stuff is happening, all these events as we, we, which we just briefly talked about. But what we also have to say to ourselves is as we get information, like for instance the various things that I just talked about, what we need to do is say to ourselves something more we have a place in this whole reality shift. This whole reality shift is not just the great beings from space and all the great people that are creating what I call and what the Galactic Federation likes to call Earth Allies. It's more than that. The most important thing is there needs to be grassroots in all of this. As they say, a lawn does not grow unless it has the roots we are the roots. What we need to say to each other is we need to bring together in our minds enough knowledge of what's going on 
and just use that to look around and interpret it and look at it some more after you interpret it and then discuss it with each other. Don't just say, well, I'm waiting for all this to happen. Activate yourself. Take this knowledge, look at it, discuss it with yourself, discuss it with others, and come together. Create groups. One of the things that I like to talk about is simply talking about planetary activation groups, or PAGs. Create your own PAG. Have a goal in it. Whether it's a goal that is, deals with art, whether it's a goal that deals with some other form of action, look to what's your joy. It's very important when you do this that you take what you feel joyous about. Work initially to create that joy not only in yourself or in the initial group around you, but bring it into your community. Help your community see and look and hear and feel itself in a different way. Understand the process. By understanding the process, all I simply mean is flow with this change. As you begin to introduce all this stuff, all this knowledge, all this abilities, let each and every one of you take the vanguard. Go forward. Be able to utilize what you're all about and bring it together. And get rid of any jealousies or ego. Support one another. As you do this, you will discover something very important. This is what I like to call creative abilities. And as these creative abilities grow within you and spread more and more through your community, you discover that whatever problem is community-wide, when you come together, you discuss it, you're positive, you speak to your strengths, you then have creative solutions. And even the most seemingly impossible problem will start to fade away. As you solve problems, as you create ways to work with one another, as you discover your, your joy, you're empowering yourself. You're empowering others. You're encouraging each other. You're coming up with things and ways and solutions that allow your community and yourselves to move forward. Now why is this all important? The Galactic Federation looks down upon all of us and sees this change happening. It encourages them. The same thing for the people that we call our Earth allies. Yes, they have resources. Yes, they've worked together with nations to create certain basic agreements with one another. Yes, they are close to bringing forth a new reality. But the most important thing is they want, I would very much like, and I know deep down each and every one of you would like to be a part of that. And by empowering yourself you create an energy, like I was just talking about, the roots that allows this new grass, this new change to grow. And as it grows, as it grows stronger, as it becomes even more greener and greener and greener than it was ever before, not only does it look more and more beautiful, but when you bring a lawn together and it's integrated, it's stronger. It can feign off disease, it can feign off foreign for instance, insects in the lawn, to use another analogy. So you can, you can basically transform all of that. You can change it all. And this is what is really important, is use this time in history to bring together your own beliefs, that stuff which brings you joy, whatever kind of talent, whatever kind of creative ability you have within you, use that. Come together with others. Discuss it. Discuss the stuff we've just been talking about. Use that to integrate within you and your community those things that are really your joy, your intuitive wonders, whatever it is. It does not matter. As that happens, the rest begins to happen. You are empowering yourself, you're empowering your community, and you're setting the stage for all the other stuff that we just talked about, of this great change creating a new reality, and moving us toward being fully conscious, of being this integration of a physical self and a spiritual self, all in one, able to leap between the physical and spiritual aspects of reality.